Hey there, welcome to another video from Between CAD Classes. Today I'm doing a little bit of 3D modeling in AutoCAD. I'm going to create the part that you see here. If you would like to try this with me, you can find a link to the detailed drawing in the description for this video. Let's take a look at the workflow I'm going to follow for the creation of this part. I'm going to begin with the creation of the bottom base feature here. Then I will add the extruded shape underneath the part. Then I will create the extruded angular feature on top of the part. Then finally I will cut the hole through the part. I'm going to jump into AutoCAD here and since this is a metric part I'm going to start with the ACAD ISO template. So I'll go to New and then ACAD ISO. I'm going to turn my grid off and then I'm going to create the main base shape. So looking at the detail drawing at the bottom view specifically, we can see that the arc is 86 millimeters from the left side, and that the arc is a radius of 64, which is also going to give us a total width of 128 for the part. So here in AutoCAD, I much prefer to draw shapes and trim them out instead of drawing arcs. So I am going to just simply start with a rectangle anywhere on screen, and then I'm going to use my relative coordinates using the at sign and then 86 comma 128. Then I'll zoom into that shape. So that'll give me the main rectangular shape and then I can add the radius 64 circle over here on the right side. So I'll select the circle command, snap to the midpoint, and then snap to one of the two endpoints. Before I can join these together, I am going to do some trimming. So I'll select the trim command and I will trim the side of the rectangle and the inside of the circle there. Then I will join these together. So I'll select modify and then join or type J and enter. Select all my shapes and press enter and they should now be one selectable polyline. Over on my view cube, I'm going to select the home icon to see this in 3D. And then I am going to extrude this shape a depth of 12. So I'll select extrude, select the shape and enter and then put in 12 and enter for my thickness. I'm going to adjust my view here in the upper left corner by changing it to shaded with edges. And next I'm going to add the rectangular feature underneath the part. So looking at the detailed drawing again, I can see that it has a width of 16 millimeters. And by doing a little bit of math, 18 minus 12, I can see that it's going to stick down six millimeters. Of course, it's going to run the full width of the part, which we determined to be 128. So back in AutoCAD, I can do this multiple different ways. Since I'm already oriented this way, I'm just going to sketch it on this side of the part. To do this, I'm going to make sure dynamic UCS is not on, and then I'm going to set my UCS on this corner here. So I'm going to come up to my coordinates panel, select three point UCS, I'll pick the bottom left corner here as my new origin, the endpoint this direction as my new X, and the endpoint straight up as my new Y. That will put my sketch plane right on that surface. If I turn my grid on, I can see that it does just that. Next, I'm just going to start a rectangle at that origin point, and then I'm going to use relative coordinates again. So it was a distance of 128 and a depth of 6. So I'm going to put in at. 128 comma negative 6 to get it to go down. And then we'll add the little rectangular shape you can see here. Now I can simply extrude that shape. So I'll select extrude, select that shape and enter. Looking at my UCS, a positive Z value would bring it this way. So I'm going to put it in as a negative 16 in my command line. Now I could go ahead and union these two pieces together. I'm going to wait and do that at the end. So the next thing that I want to do then is create an angled surface to sketch on. So let's look at our detail drawing again. And we can see that this shape is going to be up at a 30 degree angle. Once I'm at that 30 degree angle, I can see that the shape has a radius of 50 and is 68.5 millimeters from the left side edge. So back in AutoCAD, I'm going to have to change my UCS so I can draw at an angle. The first thing I'm going to do is set my UCS to be on top of this surface here. So I will use my three point UCS again. 
I'm going to pick the corner here as my new origin, and then the opposite edge this way is my new X, and then the opposite endpoint this way is my new Y. That puts my X axis right on that edge. Next, I'm going to rotate my UCS 30 degrees about the X axis. To do that, here in the coordinates panel, I'm going to select Rotate UCS, and I will rotate it around the X axis. The command line is asking me for the angle. I'll simply enter 30 and enter. And now we can see my XY plane. Again, if I turn my grid on, you get a better look at that. It's at a 30 degree angle from that edge. Now I'm ready to draw my shapes. I'm going to draw this shape very similar to how I drew the first shape, which is with a rectangle and a circle. So for my rectangle, I need to figure out how far from the edge it is. Comparing the two radius values, the shape I'm about to draw has a radius of 50. The original shape here had a radius of 64. So subtracting those tells me that the edge is going to come in 14 millimeters here. So I'm going to start my rectangle command. I'm just going to use my tracking here and track over 14 and enter along the X direction. Then I will use my relative coordinates. So we have a radius of 50, which is going to be a diameter of 100. So I'm going to go over 100 and up 68.5. So I'll type at 100 comma 68.5 and press enter. And now you can see my rectangular shape in there centered nicely. Now I can draw my circle in. So I'll select my circle, snap to the midpoint here, and then snap to the end point. Next, I'll do some trimming. So I will trim the top of that rectangle and the bottom of that circle. Then I will join those together. So J and enter or select the modify drop down and join, create a window around all those shapes and press enter. And it should now be one selectable shape. Next, I'm ready to extrude it into the part. So I will select my extrude command, select the shape, and enter, and then I'll bring it into my part. As you can see, in order to extrude it into that top surface, I'm going to end up with some extra geometry on the bottom. I'm going to eliminate this geometry by subtracting it out. If you have a better way, I'd love to see it. Please comment below. So I'm going to just eyeball this until I know that that part is interfering in here. Then I'm going to create an extrusion to subtract this shape out. So I'm just going to do that from the side over here. I'm going to change my UCS using the three point over to this side. So I will select this point here as my origin. This direction is my X. This direction is my Y. And you can see that I'm now sketching on that side plane. And then I'm just going to create a large arbitrary rectangle here that starts at that origin point and is wider than the rest of the part here. Then I'm going to extrude this into the part and subtract all this geometry here. This is also why I didn't union these features yet. It will just completely ignore this solid when I do this. So I will go ahead and extrude this rectangle shape. Any distance as long as it's longer than what's already there, then I'm ready to subtract. So I will select my subtract command select the angled shape as the geometry I want to subtract from and press enter. Then select the big rectangle here is what I want to subtract and enter. And now I can see that that geometry has been removed. Now I did leave kind of a weird edge there where they intersect, but that's not going to matter. I'm going to union these together anyways. So I will select my union command. Then I will just do a big crossing to select everything and press enter. And we can now see that it's all one big happy solid part now with no weird lines there. Again, you might have a different way of doing this. If you do, please comment below. I would love to see it. I'm going to go ahead and select my world UCS to go back to my original UCS there. And finally, I want to add in my hole. So as I look one more time at my detail drawing, it is a diameter of 76 and it cuts completely through the part. So back here in AutoCAD, instead of changing my UCS this time, I'm going to use dynamic UCS. So I'll go ahead and select that on my status bar. 
Of course, if you're not seeing dynamic UCS, use the three lines to get into your options menu and you will find the button in there to turn that option on. Now, since that is turned on, I can come in with my circle command and I can hover over that arc and it should find its center since I have center object snaps on. Then I can click to snap to it. I can enter my radius value or since we're given the diameter, I can select the diameter option in my command line and put in 76 for my diameter and enter. Then I can extrude it. So when I extrude, if I can't quite pick up the edge, you can hold the shift key and tap your spacebar to cycle through your selections and then click on the circle then press enter. And then once more, I'm just going to extrude it past the rest of the part. Then I can come back with the subtract command. So I will select subtract, select the main shape and enter, then select the shape I want to use to cut the hole out and press enter. And there we can see our final part. So in this tutorial, we can see one of the limitations of 3D modeling in AutoCAD. Many other programs such as Fusion 360 or Inventor will allow you to extrude to a specific surface. We don't really have that option here in AutoCAD. So I had a little bit extra work to subtract that additional material out. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please like and subscribe if you would like to see more. And as always, thank you so much for watching.